In this video, we're going to demonstrate uh, the failure of embolization protection device to prevent embolization. In the bottom of the screen, you can see the uh, CT scan, which really shows a pretty clean anomenate, carotid, and uh, aortic arch. The red box now shows the transcranial Doppler. Transcranial Doppler, we're looking at the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And on the top right, you're going to see the uh, fluoro of the device actually being brought into position. Bottom right is the uh, hemodynamics because the hemodynamics are important. Now highlighted, of course, is the uh, transesophageal echo, which has been run continuously. Not that relevant in this situation. And again, the hemodynamics is just to emphasize that it's difficult to interpret intracranial hemodynamics if you don't know. The red arrow now shows the deployment of the basket and by all objective purposes, looks like it's well deployed. Now the operator is going to turn to actually retroflexing the, this device, which is a six French device brought in through the brachial approach. And it's retroflexed. Now you direct this towards the superiority trunks. And if you remember on the CT scan, there's a bowline origin. Can make it difficult to catheterize. Here, a wire has been passed up, and you look for the, the, the direction of the wire to know whether it's in the carotid or whether it's in the um, subclavian artery. Now, while this is going on, now you can see, keep an eye on the TCD on the left. You can see it's divided up in the left hemisphere and right hemisphere. So we know simultaneously, and there's good pulsatile waveforms. These are good signals. Meanwhile, the wire has been manipulated, but it keeps going down the subclavian. And so what the operators have done is disengage. They're pushing it forward into the ascending aorta because you've got to get catheterize this in a, a retrograde fashion. Now they're passing the wire again. And if there's embolization, you'll see these bright white lines which are superimposed on top of the transcranial Doppler signal. Now, what we're interrogating here is the middle cerebral artery of both the right and left hemisphere. And the waveform in the bottom is the, is, is the waveform of that pulsatile flow, showing you the um, systolic and diastolic flow. And again, it's not uncommon for them to have trouble catheterizing uh, the secondary vessel in the superiotic trunks uh, with the sentinel. So again, they're fishing around with the wire, trying to get it to go into the carotid artery. Now, again, remember that the CT scan that we showed at the beginning is relatively normal. Um, it, there's not a lot of debris in the um, super in the uh, arch of the aorta or, in, or any of the superiotic trunk. But that white line, which always shows as a slope, represents embolization. So right now, we are seeing bihemispheric embolization actually occurring. And that's occurring despite the fact that the innominate basket has been deployed. And now they've deployed, and this is the, 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 sub, the carotid basket is deployed by advancing the hoop into the carotid, not by pulling back a sheath and deploying it. And you can see another embolus in this case, as you might expect, going up more on the left side, although this basket is actually in the subclavian order. So the operators are once again basically advancing. Uh, clearly in the subclavian in this situation and not in the carotid artery and you see more embolization actually occurring and you see it once again occurring in both hemispheres presumably that's due to the manipulation in the aortic arch or the device moving in both across the left common carotid orifice and the innominate artery so the operators then left the, the, with the situation they can't catheterize the left carotid and you're left with the question, do you just leave it in the subclavian or do you actually just give up the secondary basket? And in this case, they opted to give up that secondary basket. And so now you're actually going to see this in case an Edwards valve, which has been advanced over the aortic arch. And once again, as it starts to advance, now you see bilateral embolization occurring in both hemispheres. And remember, there's a basket in the innominate, there's nothing in the left carotid, You'd expect to see a difference. We don't see any difference in the amount of embolization occurring. And now the device has been positioned. There's continuous embolization occurring into the head. Now it's slowing down just a little bit. Pigtail catheter has been brought back up into position. The root shot is going to occur. Now the, sheath, the device has been unsheathed. You see more embolization occurring. But the embolization really hasn't stopped. And now they're going to shoot the ascending aorta on the root. And again, you may see bubbles 
for on the contrast, that's why it's important to record both of these at the same time. So there's puff being injected. Actually, we don't see a lot. I see a little bit, but not much. The device is going to be deployed. And you're going to see the pigtails being brought back. Device is being deployed. And as soon as that happens, you'll see decreased flow both sides because the balloon's up. Now the balloon is going to come down. We restore flow to both hemispheres. And you're going to start seeing showers of emboli actually occurring in both hemispheres, despite the presence of the embolization protection device in the nominate order. And now the device has been withdrawn across the aortic arch. Continuous embolization is occurring here, and it will just slowly, gradually disappear. So clearly, embolization protection devices can generate emboli during their positioning. They are even when positioned in this situation, you obviously have an internal control where we can see right side versus left side, and there was ongoing embolization. Whether it occurs through the basket or around the basket, these are things that remain to be determined. Thank you.